very tightly bound group there, the doctors, the incredible nurses that work with us there, and the bush pilots who are our ambulance drivers because there's no roads. And uh, together with uh, the Inuits uh, who work with us, we uh, just keep the health system running up there. It is a great, great experience of uh, responsibility, resourcefulness, and inventiveness very often. You kind of need a bit of a MacGyver spirit. At the same time, it's such a small group you have to depend on each other. And that was uh, a very good life lesson. Next slide, please. I was very, very happy with that life. Uh, and I had sort of forgotten, I wouldn't say forgotten about my dream of being an astronaut, but it was on the back burner. It was more something of a fantasy, something that, that pushed me to better myself, to continue exploring. And I heard that the, the Canadian Space Agency was recruiting astronauts. And that moment for me uh, was very special. It was like as if the world had stopped turning for a second. I thought to myself, I, I have to apply. I have to try. I, I owe it to the little boy in me to at least try. Followed about a year of tests, as you can imagine. Interviews were tested, everything you can imagine. You can imagine probably physical tests, medical tests, a lot of psychological testing, um, mathematics, this sort of thing. Um, one thing, though, that was heavily tested is how do you apply those skills under pressure? I'd like you to see the little video, which I think gives you a good impression of uh, the sort of uh, the sort of skills that they were looking for. Next slide, please. We were at a Navy facility where they train uh, um, crews to fight fires and floods on board ships. What an intense year that was, intense year, and all these friends I made among the candidates, uh, friends for life. And I can tell you that there's nothing that they didn't try on us. And eventually, I got lucky, and I was selected, and uh, along with uh, Jeremy Hansen, a fighter pilot from uh, the Game Forces. And uh, the day uh, Steve, Dr. McLean, Steve McLean, the president of the CSA, announced uh, us, uh, Minister Clement was there too, because of course he was Minister of Industry at the time. And uh, so, and he gave a very inspiring speech, I remember. And it, for me, it was a challenge to speak after him. So here I am once more with the challenge of, of speaking after Minister Clement. Next slide, please. But there's more to it uh, about uh, Minister Clement. Did you know that he's a very good Rolex operator? Here he is at the CSA practicing his skills on uh, the simulator we have there. I feel lucky he didn't apply to the space program because uh, he might have had the job in, instead of me. Next slide, please. Jeremy and I uh, were then sent to uh, Houston, Texas at the Johnson Space Center to join the 20th astronaut class. These are now my friends for life, nine Americans, three Japanese, two Canadian, all united in his dream of uh, training to become astronauts. For about two years, uh, we were trained on all basic skills. Next slide, please. Of course, robotics, central to the space program. You know, Canada, of course, is uh, the leader in space robotics. Every astronaut and every cosmonaut that has flown has had to go through the headquarters of the CSA in uh, near Montreal and Quebec to learn robotics and to learn to operate uh, the Canada. Next slide, please. This is a nice photo I like of uh, Commander Hatfield while he was installing uh, Kandarm on the space station. And he's uh, doing what we call an EVA, an extravehicular activity, i.e. a spacewalk. 
Spacewalking is also a skill that we have to train for during astronaut training. Next slide, please. We do this in an enormous pool uh, in Houston, which allows us to uh, simulate weightlessness uh, using the proxy of uh, buoyancy. We use uh, the same space suits we'll use in space. There's, a, of course, a huge team of divers there to ensure safety uh, of the operation. There is a full-scale replica of the space station at the bottom of the pool. And uh, every spacewalk that's been done has been rehearsed several times before in the pool. So there's no mystery nor surprise once it's done on orbit. Next slide, please. We also uh, learned to uh, operate high-performance jet aircraft. This is one of the parts of training that uh, I like most. I'm sure for Jeremy, it's a piece of cake, but for me, it's a big challenge. Next slide, please. You might wonder why we do this uh, jet, uh, jet training. This, this photo, I think, explains to you why. It's mostly psychological training. This is the closest we have to the environment, spaceflight environment. You're with this tight helmet, the visor, the oxygen mask, in this confined environment of the cockpit with tens of dials, the radio going in all sorts of directions, people talking all frequencies. You have to think fast and act fast and make no mistakes. Plus. This is not a simulation. This is real, and if you make a mistake, the consequences are real too. So this is one of our most valuable ways to, to train uh, to the state of mind that you have to be in for a space mission. Next slide, please. We also learn survival techniques. Here we are uh, in the taiga uh, in the northern Russia. Of course, for a Canadian, we are, I had an advantage uh, for this part training. This is just winter camping, right? So. That was easy. Desert survival training was more difficult for me. Thirsty for two weeks. Next slide, please. We also learn uh, geology. There we are with a specialist of margin geology looking at a crater in Arizona. Why do we learn geology, you might ask? Our next target is an asteroid. Then we might go back to the moon. And we probably will eventually one day go to Mars. Maybe I'm too old to go to these places, but maybe I will contribute to the design of those missions. So every astronaut has to learn the basics of geology, because when we go to these destinations, that's basically the science we're there to do. Next slide, please. We also learn basic emergency medicine skills. I had the chance to train uh, Jeremy here. Uh, in uh, an emergency room, a simulation room uh, near Montreal at McGill University. I must say Jeremy would be a very good doctor, very calm under pressure, as you can imagine, from a, from a fighter pilot and a quick learner, of course. Next slide, please. I have to say, I was secretly hoping that you might be uneasy in the environment of an emergency room, maybe feeling a little bit upset or queasy, I don't know, because he had taken me on the back seat of his F-18 a couple of weeks before, and he had, let me tell you, with all these aerobatics, he had made me feel a bit uneasy. But uh, no, Jeremy's a tough guy. And an Isaac. 